This segment of our course on gearboxes deals with the disassembly of a typical right-angle, single-reduction gearbox. In fact, we will be working with the actual gearbox shown in the last segment. First, as with any job, the workman assembles the necessary tools, equipment, and materials. Don't forget to don the proper personal protective equipment as required by your plant's safety regulations. Before taking the gearbox apart, it is a good policy to clean the outside of the gear case thoroughly. This will prevent dirt and other foreign material from falling into the working parts of the gearbox during disassembly. It's also wise to match mark any parts of the gearbox which could be confused during reassembly. This practice could eliminate much wasted time later. If any lubricating oil still remains in the gearbox, it should be drained and disposed of according to the procedures at your plant. External lubrication and oil cooler lines should be removed from the gearbox since they could be damaged during disassembly. Don't forget to match mark them if there could be any doubt as to where they should be replaced. In many cases, it is a good idea to remove the end inspection cover from the gearbox, like this, and take a look inside. This may give you an indication of what to expect during your disassembly, especially if there is obvious damage. The first step in the actual disassembly of the gearbox is to unbolt and remove the oil pump from the outer bearing retainer. Then, unbolt the outer bearing retainer from the bearing cartridge and lift it off, as the workman is doing here. This retainer also serves as the base for the oil pump, which was just removed. Before going any further, remove the old retainer gasket very carefully with a scraper. It's important that the gasket be removed carefully, since we must know its exact thickness. This will enable us to replace it with a new gasket of the same dimensions. With the retainer out of the way and the blind end of the low-speed shaft exposed, it's a simple matter to remove the oil pump coupling from the end of the shaft, like this. The next step is to remove the two lock nuts from the blind end of the low-speed shaft. To do this, you must first loosen the tabs of the lock washer then, remove the lock nuts with a spanner wrench or similar tool. Now, remove the cap screws holding the low-speed bearing cartridge to the gearbox case. With the cap screws removed, the workman now inserts two jack bolts into two of the threaded holes in the cartridge. He will use the jack bolts to raise the bearing cartridge out of the case and to slide the angular contact bearings off the shaft. Notice that the workman is being very careful to raise the cartridge evenly using the crossover method on the bolts. This will help to prevent the cartridge from cocking in the case and the bearings from jamming on the shaft. Once the bearings are free of the shaft, the bearing cartridge may be lifted out of the case as shown here. The workman is now tilting the bearing cartridge toward you, affording a clear view of the two angular contact bearings mounted back to back in the cartridge. We'll set the cartridge aside for now and complete its disassembly later. As you did with the bearing retainer gasket earlier, remove the bearing cartridge gasket from the case very carefully. Again, as with the other gasket, the thickness is very important. We'll explain why later in the course during reassembly of this gearbox. For now, all that's necessary is to mic the gasket very carefully. And record the measurement along with the figure for the bearing retainer gasket. You'll need both figures when obtaining replacement gaskets. With the disassembly complete for now on the low speed shaft, the workman starts on the high speed assembly. The first step is to remove the cap screws which hold the bearing retainer and the bearing cartridge to the case. As you may remember, the same set of screws holds both parts in place. The retainer may then be removed by simply sliding it off the end of the shaft.
Be careful not to damage the built-in labyrinth while doing this. The workman finds that the outer bearing spacer has been removed from the high-speed shaft along with the retainer. The spacer should be labeled as the high-speed outer spacer to prevent confusion during reassembly. Our next step is to break the high-speed bearing cartridge loose from the case. This is done in the same manner as we did with the low-speed cartridge. Use jack bolts in the threaded holes of the cartridge to break it loose from the case. However, in this case, it is only necessary to break the cartridge loose about a quarter of an inch, as shown by the red pointer. The reason is that the high-speed cartridge cannot be removed until the top of the gearbox case has been taken off. To remove the top half of the case, it is necessary to remove the cap screws holding it in place. Some of these cap screws are blocked by fittings and by this inspection plate. Therefore, the plate and other fittings which block the cap screws must be removed. The cap screws in the top half of the case may now be removed as shown here. Don't forget to extract the dowel pins, which align the top and bottom halves of the case. All that remains now is to affix slings and shackles to the top half of the case and lift it off like this. However, be very careful when laying the case top down, since there are oil spray nozzles protruding from the bottom, which could be bent or otherwise damaged unless you are careful. Before removing either of the gears from the case, we must not forget to check the match marking on the gears. If the gears are not marked, it will be necessary to do so before they are removed from the case. By looking closely at the mirror, you can see that these gears have already been marked. After checking the gears, rig slings on the high-speed cartridge assembly and lift it out of the case as shown here. After placing the high-speed cartridge to one side, the workman attaches his slings to the low-speed shaft and lifts it straight up out of the case. By looking closely, you'll see the radial roller bearing underneath the gear wheel, with a lock washer and umbrella just under the bearing. That completes the removal of both the high- and low-speed shaft and gear assemblies from the gearbox. The majority of the disassembly, which remains, has to do with taking them apart. To begin with, our workman is going to remove the parts from the low-speed shaft. The first step, shown here, is to unlock the tabs on the lock washer. With that done, he can unscrew the umbrella and remove it from the shaft, along with the lock washer which was just loosened. All that remains is to pull the radial roller bearing off the shaft, using the best method possible to prevent damage to the bearing. Our workman is removing the bearing with two pry bars, being very careful to ensure that it is removed evenly. Since we'll be leaving the gear wheel in place for now, that will complete our disassembly of the low-speed shaft. The workman sets it aside on the workbench and moves to the next phase of our task. Now we'll begin work on the high-speed cartridge assembly, shown here. You may have noticed that our workman performs his work on the gear assemblies on a sheet of plywood. This is done to prevent any damage to the gear teeth, which could be incurred if they were in contact with a metal surface, like the work table. The first step is to unlock the lock washer on the assembly, as the workman is now doing with a screwdriver. Then he unscrews the umbrella and slides it and the lock washer off the high-speed shaft. With the umbrella and lock washer out of the way, the lock nut may be easily removed with a spanner wrench, like this. The way is now clear for the shaft and gear to be pressed out of the cartridge and the three bearings it contains. We will use a hydraulic coupling puller to press the shaft and gear out of the cartridge. You may prefer an alternate method in common use at your plant. If you do press the shaft out of the cartridge, don't forget to protect the end of the shaft with a piece of copper, as being pointed out here.
This will prevent damage to the shaft center. Here are the high-speed shaft and bearing cartridge after being separated with the coupling puller as shown a moment ago. We'll continue the disassembly of the cartridge assembly first. This end of the bearing cartridge contains the two angular contact bearings and the outer, center, and inner spacers. As you remember, the outer spacer was removed earlier when the bearing retainer was disassembled. The workman is now sliding the outside angular contact bearing out of the cartridge. Since this is usually a clearance fit, he has little difficulty. With the outer bearing removed, the workman displays the two center bearing spacers, which separate the bearings. And this is the inner angular contact bearing with its spacer after being removed from the cartridge. Don't forget to tag and label the spacers and bearings to prevent confusion later during reassembly. It's also wise to note how the bearings were installed. For instance, this pair were mounted back to back in the cartridge. The next step is to turn the bearing cartridge over like this and remove the radial roller bearing from this end. The inner race, the cage, and the rollers remained on the shaft when it was pressed out of the cartridge. However, the outer race is still held in the cartridge by the inner bearing retainer. The retainer is held in place by cap screws, which are wired to prevent them from working loose during operation in the gearbox and damaging the internal moving parts. The workman is cutting this safety wire so the cap screws may be removed. After the cap screws are removed, the inner bearing retainer may be lifted off the end of the cartridge like this. Now that the retainer has been removed, you have a clear view of the outer race of the radial bearing in the cartridge. We are going to use this race to demonstrate a solution to a very common problem often encountered in the removal of bearings. We'll assume that this bearing race is damaged and is stuck in the cartridge. Due to its position, it could be a real problem to remove. The solution is simple. Weld two stringer beads around the inside diameter of the damaged race. This shrinks the race enabling you to remove it from the cartridge quite easily once it is cooled. Don't forget to remove the cartridge gasket and save it for reference during reassembly. With the disassembly of the high-speed cartridge complete, we will now remove the radial bearing and the pinion gear from the high-speed shaft as being pointed out here. Due to its construction, the gear must be removed before the bearing can be pressed off the shaft. Therefore, the workman is loosening the locking tabs on the lock washer. The lock nut may then be removed with a spanner wrench, and the lock washer slid off behind it. The next step will be to press the gear and bearing off the shaft. However, before installing the high-speed shaft in a coupling puller, it will be necessary to install a backing plate on the shaft, as being pointed out here. The bore of the plate is large enough so that the workman could slide it over the right end of the shaft and position it firmly against the inner race of the bearing. It's then a simple matter to press the shaft out of the gear and bearing, as being done here in this hydraulic coupling puller. Remember to place a piece of copper between the end of the ram and the shaft to prevent damage to the center. This is the end result. Both the pinion gear and the bearing removed from the high-speed shaft. We're now ready for the next step. That step is the disassembly of the low-speed bearing cartridge shown here. It contains the two angular contact bearings and the bearing spacers. First, he removes the outer bearing spacer, like this, the outer angular contact bearing may then be slid out of the cartridge, followed by the two center spacers and the inner angular contact bearing and its spacer. Don't forget to tag each of the spacers as to their position to preclude any difficulty in putting them back in their original positions. 
It's also important to note the mounting arrangement of the two angular contact bearings you just removed. In this case, as with the high-speed cartridge, the two bearings were installed back to back. There is only one more basic step in the disassembly of this gearbox. We must remove the outer race of the low-speed radial bearing, which still remains under the inner bearing retainer in the bearing carrier. As with the high-speed cartridge, the cap screws in this inner bearing retainer are secured by a safety wire, which must be cut before they can be removed. The cap screws may then be removed, and the inner bearing retainer lifted off the bearing carrier. The final step is to pull the outer bearing race out of the bearing carrier, as being done here. Your supervisor can show you the recommended method at your plant. That completes the basic disassembly procedure for this right angle single reduction gearbox. The methods we have shown you are generally effective and are acceptable at most plants. However, as you know, it is impossible to cover every conceivable variation which you'll encounter in various pieces of equipment. We'll be back to talk about repair and replacement of parts after you complete exercise number six in your workbook.